What is up, guys? It is Mercifies here, back for lesson number 10. Woohoo! Made it to 10. Hopefully, I can keep continuing these uh, Java tutorials. I did stop for a little while. As you can see, it's 1124. The, uh, the last lesson, which is the switch cases and for loops was recorded on 10.8 so it's been it's been quite a while it's almost been two months and uh, I feel like I need to pick these up again so today we're gonna be going over the string method now you might be saying well Mercifies we already know strings alright you, you can use a string such as string str equals Mercifies is a real cool dude and we have that as a data type but we want to print that out all we gotta do is type in a system mount print line of str. It's going to print out Mercify as a real cool dude. Well, there's a lot of other things you can do with strings as well. You can figure out the length. You can return certain points of the string. So if I want to just return Mercifies instead of Mercify as a real cool dude, I can do that with using the string method. I can get the char at the character at a certain point inside of this. So if I wanted to figure out, if I wanted to figure out, um, five let's see we'll start I, I don't want to I don't want to get ahead of myself so we're just gonna back it up here a little bit we're gonna figure out the length of this string because I want to know how many integers it is and Mercify is a real cool dude I want to know what the number is of this sentence so all I have to do is type in str dot length as you can see right here with the two parentheses at the end of it. What this is going to do, which you can see down here, uh, is it's going to return an integer of the length of this string. Now, the ideology that you're going to have to take out of today's lesson, it's not going to be as uh, difficult as the past lessons where I was throwing, you know, switch cases, for loops, if else statements, you know, big things that you need to learn. I was throwing at you in past tutorials. Well, today's more of a uh, a subtle kind of ideology, and that is that in Java, certain things start counting at zero, while other things start counting at one. The length of a string is one of those that starts at one. Majority of things, I, w I don't want to say majority actually, but a good amount of things in Java start at zero, and it kind of screws with you. Uh, as you will see farther in this tutorial, uh, I don't know why certain things start at 1 compared to 0 or 0 compared to 1. It is what it is. I'm not going to complain. I mean, I kind of am complaining, but it is what it is. That's all I can say. So we have the length of this string. Mercify is a real cool dude. That's, you know, that's awesome. We know that it's 30 characters long. But what if I'm trying to figure out what uh, what the tenth character is I want to figure out what letter that is so if I go ten characters in I want to know what letter that is well to do that you use the char at function and basically all you do is type in another system out print line put in str dot char at and here we're going to type in 10 because that's the index that we're going to be looking for. Now, if I start right here, if I count it out and I count from 1, it's going to give me something different than what it's going to uh, print out because with the char at feature, it starts at 0. Length starts at 1, char at starts at 0. It's kind of screwed up, I know, but that's just what it is. So if I were to start at 0 and go in, 10 characters, so 0, 1, no, no, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It should print out I. Let's find out. Compile it, and it prints out an I. Now, you might be saying, well, well, uh, I almost said my real name. Well, Mercifies, why is it that char at starts at 0 and length starts at 1? It's kind of screwy. It doesn't, you know, make that much sense. Well, the length is a lot different than the char at. Char at is basically returning the index of a specific character in the string. Now, index of is another thing that I'm going to be talking about that also starts at zero. 
along, uh, along with uh, substring. Anything that has to do with index, the index of something, uh, it might not full out say it, but char at has to deal with the index of a string, it's going to start at zero. If it's just counting it based off of uh, you know, how you would count something normally, like the length is, it's going to start at one. So it's kind of, again, it's, it's, it's a really messed up thing. I don't know why Java insisted on having length start at one and char at substring uh, index of start at zero, but it is what it is. So you just have to remember that length starts at one, everything else, not everything else, but a good amount of the other things, everything else in this tutorial starts at zero. So you're thinking, all right, Mercifies, we have the length of it, and we know how to figure out what the character is at a certain point in our sentence. But what if we want to do something else different? What if I wanted to figure out what the index of what the uh, what how far in is is you know what if I wanted to figure out what uh, is was so all I got to do this, this is sorry I'm not making much sense here but if I type in str dot index of and I type in string str or I can start at a character and uh, go on I'm just gonna type in the string the index of um, what do we say is no is if I keep saying is is and was is it's gonna screw up somebody so I'm gonna say dude I'm gonna find out the index of dude so we're gonna compile this it's gonna give us 25 so when dude the word dude is starting this is 25 characters in. Okay. Now you might be saying, all right, that's not going to help us at all. We don't really care what the index of dude is. I want to figure out what the, how to uh, take a word out of this and, uh, and use just that word. So we're going to replace dude with real. Because it's in the middle of the sentence. And I need to figure out what the beginning is of real. So real starts at 15. So you might be thinking, all right, real starts at 15, big whoop. We start another system out print line, and we type in substring, str.substring. Substring allows us to put in either one or two different points. So I can either type in 15, and it's going to return real cool dude, or I can type in 15, a comma, and then type in, let's see, 19. It's going to just print out real. Substring is how you pull a specific word or group of letters or whatever out of a string. If I want to pull out the specific uh, area of the string, and I just want to print that out, use the substring for that. Substring is probably something you'll use more often than the rest of the things as you can see it printed out real uh, you're probably going to use substring more than you're going to use uh, char at index of is kind of popular and length is kind of popular uh, but substring is definitely something that you will be using in the future if you continue to follow your Java career so we figured out how to pull out specific words in our string, our conglomeration, con conglomeration, conglomeration, I don't know why I said that, uh, and you're still thinking, all right, well, this doesn't, you know, wh what is, what's the point of this lesson, Merce, Mercifies, what's the point? The point of this lesson is to show you that there's lots and lots and lots of different things that you can do with each data type. Now, this is just the string. I'm showing you the string data type mainly because it's it's different it's not it's not what everything else is uh, it's just it's just different and you're gonna be using strings a lot in future code because everything that we we read is is in words and essentially in strings or a string data type and so I wanted to show you this now the last thing there's actually gonna be two things I wanted to show you uh, a simple thing that I'm just going to throw in here right now. If I want to add a word, 
actually here it is. I'm gonna print out the string str. Mercify is a real cool dude, but what if I wanted to add a little bit on to the end of that sentence? Well, all I gotta do is hit a plus, and we're gonna space it out because there is no space at the end of this. Uh, Mercify is a real cool dude. He has gas. He has some nice ass hair. All right. That right there, this system output line is going to add these two strings together and conglomerate it into one giant string that's being printed out. It's very base. It's a uh, you know, kind of a basic idea. Uh, so we're gonna compile that. Mercify is a real cool dude. He has some nice ass hair. All right, awesome. But what if I wanted to put an integer at the end of this? Now. If I change this from a string adding another string and I change it to one, you might be thinking, well, what is this going to do? You're adding a string and an integer. I don't think that really works out. Well, when you're adding a string and another data type, it just merges it into a string. So if I add one to the end of this, all it's going to do is print out the same thing, but instead one is going to be added at the end. It just kind of merges it all into one data type. Now you might be thinking, all right, what if I replace this string right here with a string that says one, two, three, four, and I add one to that? Is that going to print out one, two, three, five? No. It's going to print out one, two, three, four, and one because this is not an integer, it is a string. And so, as you see here, one, two, three, four, one. You can't merge these two data types. It just merges into a string data type. You cannot add an integer and a string, even though they are all numbers. Just want to throw that out there. Wasn't really planning on adding that into this lesson, but I figure it's kind of something that we need to know. And then the last thing is uh, using the equals ignore case. Now, what this does is it returns a Boolean type, either true or false. So we type in string, uh, make us a new string, str2 equals, uh, actually we're going to change this. We're going to change Mercifies with capitals, with uh, one capital, and then Mercifies with no capitals. Now, equals ignore case will compare these two strings that I have mercifies with a capital and mercifies without a capital and it's going to return either true or false based on how I have it set up so if um, if mm, 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 str dot equals str2 it's going to Oop, we don't need that. It's going to print out uh, these are equal to each other. Okay. Now I'm going to put an else if statement. Else if str dot. Actually, no, no, no. I'll just start off with this. So we're going to compare it. If they are equal. It's going to print out these are equal to each other. Else, if they're not equal, it's going to print out, oops, that's it. Compile it. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna delete these. I don't. Uh, I wasn't thinking about that when I started. I'm gonna delete these because it's throwing me an error because 15 is not existent in string. So I'm just gonna delete all that stuff and we're just gonna compare these two together. Now it printed out oops, and you might be thinking, well, why did it print that out? They're both equal. They both say mercifies. Just one has a capital. Well, when you're using the equals statement in the uh, the string method it's going to compare them they have to be exactly the same 
you cannot have any differences whatsoever okay so this little capital difference that threw off the whole program and made it an else so to change that all we have to do is just after this equals we type in ignore case a capital I and a capital C and that is going to do the same function but instead it's not going to care if it's capital or lowercase so print that out compile it they are equal to each other that is going to be the end of the tutorial guys uh, it's been 15 minutes I know it's kinda long I'm sorry I kinda rambled it was a little bit confusing but hopefully next lesson is gonna make more sense I just after I started creating these tutorials I realized that I didn't really go over strings that much and the different things that you could do with it so I decided to throw this tutorial in there for lesson number 10 next lesson uh, I'm not fully sure what I want to do but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be going over arrays uh, and then later on two-dimensional arrays and and so on and so forth but this is today's lesson that's what we got hope you guys enjoyed if it didn't make sense uh, let me know message me leave a comment I will try to explain things as best as I can thanks guys have a good day